Shut up and sit down. Hi right, guys, I'm Dodge. This is Big Mech's workshop on Paint Studio. And this is the second part to the Defcopter 1 for Warg Decay. I managed to dig out a bunch of old Defcopters, which luckily for us, by looking at these parts, it really is going to work pretty well without too much work. We don't have to do too much sculpting it. As you can tell, if we just uh, take out the, the guy out of the middle, we've got something that resembles what I was drawing beforehand. Um, sorry about the lighting, the camera's being a bit of a pain recently as I keep changing desks, but I've gone back to the old desk, which is a, a change after about a year. I've been sat building bases on the other one uh, for most of the year. As you can see here on this design, if I just turn this upside down and have a look at the parts, I've got something similar to this. Uh, I can start building onto that to uh, really bulk out the model that we're going to build. Uh, this is not going to be a full conversion video. This is going to be more a uh, rundown of parts so we don't have to run down the parts while we're doing the conversion video. And scale wise, the ogre bodies from 40k could potentially fit, uh, but I really wanted to bulk them up even more. Uh, this is an old one I was mucking about with. That's another death copter design from uh, a long time ago. But I decided it'd be better to use these even bulkier bodies. The bigger I can make this death copter and the more menacing I can make it look, the better. So I'm going to have to find some more fantasy ogre parts. This is an old conversion from many, many years ago. As you can imagine, uh, having been running this studio for like, I don't know, a bunch of years. I can't remember how many. I've got a lot of parts. So if I take out this guy, take out the pilot for the death copter, and you look at the details at the side, and then I take the legs off these ogrins, there's a good chance that I can um, just stick that in there and start sculpting and building around it. And there's a couple of more old models kicking around here. I don't think I've quite got enough ogrins to do all these, but I know I've got 10 of these death copters. Now, the other benefit to these death copters is I, if I can get them in half, it's going to make my life even easier. And if the ogrins too wide for the model, I can then bulk it out a little bit further using plastic card and other stuff and widen the def copter and then I can fill in details and add extra parts to it. See, I, I like the scale of that. Once the legs have gone, I should be able to really fill that in and add a lot more details. As you can see, that one, it just won't seem quite big enough. As you can see here, this arm is um, its actually an Ogryn arm, and that is a part from, I think it's a Kill Can or a Death Dread, but I've managed to sculpt that arm there quite well, so I'll probably still use that rocket launcher arm, but uh, take it apart. And I can also take rockets off the front of these, as I won't be using the fronts of the uh, rockets, and start filling in the rest of the rocket launcher and adding more guns to it. It's an Orc uh, vehicle, technically, so the more guns, the better. Also, trying to figure out how I'm going to do these propellers on the back. Um, obviously, this is the fed bloat drone parts. Um, and scale-wise, they do re work really, really well. The problem with this, if I'm going to make five of these, I would need every two fed bloat drone kit would only get me three models done. Because uh, they have three of those propellers on each one. So either I'm going to have to sculpt something or cast something very similar and then we're going to probably scale those down and we're going to add more orky parts which are, I'll show you in a bit just around the outsides and attach those to um, the death copter there's plenty of pipes and other random details on these bits as well um, really need to capture that cross between Nurgle and Orcs as I said in the uh, first video the, uh, the concept art they're not actually dedicated to Nurgle. They're just uh, really messed up orcs uh, that are run by a pain boss. And uh, they're all rotting away. Um, and I'll go into details on that on another video at some point if you guys want to see that video. Now, I'm a collector of bits. I try and keep them organized in these bags and uh, pipes and things like that. I can never get enough bits of piping or, uh, what is it, pipes and... Uh, armor plates 
just any detailed bits like this I couldn't really think of a way to describe that I think that's the back of a uh, burner boy all these detail parts really add something so I'm thinking of using a lot of these and I think in a sec I do find a way of actually almost snapping that straight on yeah it pretty much snaps on there and just needs a little bit of uh, work be able to run those pipes around the back add some more details to it put the propellers on there that's kind of the plan anyway whether that go whether it goes to plan or not it's a different thing now, this is um yeah another ogrin that I was uh, mucking about with many years ago when I uh, sculpted the uh, rib cage in there the same way I did the Nurgle green stuff with the forge fiend um, just layering it up bit by bit so I could also do the same thing with these these were gonna, going to be uh, mega knobs obviously that gun now looking back at it looks ridiculous but you can see how it's very easy to collect spare parts on vehicles and people's spare bits collections and start putting them together to actually make something rather orky and of course an orc vehicle wouldn't be uh, complete without more exhausts and more random bits that it doesn't need but if you look at this particular vent and this is off um, I think it's off a um, death dread it looks kind of death guard nurgle regardless anyway so trying to combine those two two concepts together it shouldn't be too difficult if I can get hold of an abundance of the right parts. And using the actual Death Copter model as a base template is probably going to be the best way to go rather than sculpting up from nothing. I also have these bits from Maxi Minis. Uh, I don't know if I want to use those on this particular concept. I just thought I'd show you them. They are really, really cool. They would work really, really well for my uh, Burner Boys. Uh, I'll get around to doing the Burner Boys at some point. It is nice to be sat here working on my own army. Another problem I found, uh, because I am scaling up the entire my entire Orc army, is um, heads. Now, this is a uh, Forge World Commando set head and only say only the knobs head would fit and that's gonna be a lot of buying those and I don't want them all to look the same anyway so at some point I am gonna to have to come up with a video and we're gonna try and make gas masks ourselves out of random bits um, and see if I can get those done it's very difficult to do that on an orc head and make that look right but uh, I'm gonna make quite a few of these because uh, I just wanted to get some units in my army done. Now the other concept for the head is to just put the uh, jaw pieces on over large Ogryn heads and then sculpt other details into it. That could work quite well. Or I could in fact just get a bunch of all these iron jaws. Now the iron jaws heads, because they're big metal heads, they're actually pretty close to the right scale. Although they do look metal currently, we could green stuff over them. We can take off some of those horns and pipe, or some of those horns, replace them with pipes or ventilators. Um, that could work um, and would be a lot cheaper. There's also some good shoulder pads on the top of that there that might, might work quite well. It's supposed to be a drum, but uh, I could turn that into a shoulder pad pretty easily. As you can see, there's lots of sprues and uh, lots of parts. This is basically just a part rundown. It's, I'm trying to keep it really, really short. Um, also, we used to have the round flying bases. Now we have the oval ones. I know exactly what kind of scale I'm going to be aiming towards. And as you can see, um, obviously the Games Workshop have matched that size to that model. But when I put the uh, augurin on and, you know, put that inside the death copter you're going to see it's going to take up a lot of that base and it should look death copter scale and size so if i put it on the tabletop my opponent's not going to be confused as to uh, what that is uh, obviously the the base that you put it on when you put so much work into a model is going to matter uh, you're going to want a nice detailed base that really adds something to the model uh, 
and of course we're going to need a bunch of shoulder pads um, all different sizes for shoulder pads when it comes to a comes to this there's lots of options there's the kill can shoulder pads um def dread shoulder pads just knobs in general or you could uh fashion some together i think these ones are from is it the flash gits now i do like that as a concept because um these two at the front i've got little uh, hooks on them so i could potentially put green stuff uh, straps from there across the uh, the front holding the whole um, hold, holding, holding the shoulder pads on so they don't look like they're just stuck on for no reason I'm really looking forward to actually getting on building this for you uh, but that will be in the next video I uh, will change the thumbnails again on that so you can tell which parts which and if you haven't subscribed yet and you want to keep tabs on these videos because uh, you're actually interested in this in this whole uh, conversion setup that i've got going on do it subscribe and hit that notification bell so you do get notif notifications for this and uh, you won't miss out on any of the next steps that i'm doing and that's all from me thanks for watching guys and i will catch you in the next one